What's up guys and welcome to my video on everything you need to know about the Turtle Graphics Library of Python. So to begin, Turtle Graphics is basically this nice and easy to use tool that allows you to get the hang of the coding syntax while at the same time making these fun little animations. In this video, we'll start out by going over the basic, most basic examples you can have in Turtle. So we'll do things like just drawing this line here. Then we'll move into more complex things like shapes. And I'll also show you how to make these blue, as you see. Then we'll move into pretty little flowers. So something that looks like this. And as we get even further, we'll do some, we'll, I'll show you how to, you can use these complex math equations to get graphs that look like this. And you can see this one's still cranking out that animation and also this. So this one I use like a square root function somewhere in there and it's doing all sorts of funky stuff. And then finally, we'll end this video going over a more complex programming concept called recursion, which allowed me to create this really cool star graph that you see here. So as you can tell, it's drawing little stars among big stars. It's just, there's so many stars everywhere. And that's what we'll end this video on. I'll put a video outline in the, in, in the comments. So if you're trying to find one of these specific examples, go to the comments and you'll find it there. All right, to get started, we'll wanna open up a new Sublime Text window and then save a new Python file. And it doesn't matter what you name it, just use that .py file extension. And whenever we start a turtle Python file, we need to include the following at the top of it, import turtle. So this is just basically letting our Python file know that we're gonna be using the turtle library in it. And we'll always wanna end our turtle files with the, the line turtle.done. This just keeps our animation window open so that we can actually see what we've done. And now that we've done that, we're ready to create our first turtle. Super fun. Bob, we're gonna say, this is what we're gonna do, follow me. Bob equals turtle dot turtle. And we're gonna save that with control S, control B. And yay, we got this, this super exciting just arrow on our screen. All right, and it's just a stationary arrow because we haven't told it to do anything yet. So I could go ahead and say something like, this is the first command you'll want to know. I could do bob.forward here, and I can type in a number like 100. And what this command is saying is it's saying, we want to move the turtle bob forward 100 pixels. So this 100 represents the pixel amount. And so if I run that, we got that straight line. Cool, it went 100 pixels forward. And also I just want to mention real quick, I don't have to name this Bob. I can name this, you know, Amazon Alexa. Sure, why not? I could name this after, you know, John Cena. Why not? Uh, but I'm gonna actually just name it, just for simplicity's sake, after myself, Keith. I'm the turtle. Keith thought forward 100, and as you can see, it still works. Okay, so that's the most basic command: forward. In addition to forward, we'll want to be able to turn our, our turtle. So we can do that with the function keith.left. And I want to turn 45 degrees. I want to be a little bit slanted. So I'm going to type in 45. So this takes in an angle in degrees. And then let's move myself forward again. Cool. So we got that angle I showed in the beginning of the video. And if you're wondering where I'm kind of look like, how do I know these functions? Like, how do I know that forward works? How do I know that left works? I recommend you take a look at the official turtle documentation site. So if you go to this link right here and I'll, don't worry about like kind of zooming in and trying to figure out what this link says, I'll post this in the description, but basically what this link has is everything, every function you could want to know in turtle it's all documented here. So like forward is documented here, forward distance, cool. But there's all sorts of cool things that I can't cover everything in this video. So definitely check out this site. All right, and if we have forward, 
we must have write as well. So it is totally valid to write as well. So you can do write 90 degrees and then go forward again. And if I run that, you see that it went left 45, up forward 100, and then right 100. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so now that we have that, we're probably ready to move into the first shape. We're gonna make some squares, super, super cool stuff. All right, so, and if you wanna keep this code here, but still be able to build your squares with a blank slate, just highlight all of this code and do control slash and it will comment it all. And this only works in Sublime and some other editors, so if it didn't work for you, maybe try getting Sublime. All right, so we're gonna make a square. So I would say before I go ahead and just do it, Try to make a square on your own because you have all the building blocks you need with these commands. So try to make your turtle do a square real quick. Pause it. All right, hopefully you figured it out. If you didn't, I'll go through it right now. So we can do keith.forward100. And that doesn't have to be 100 pixels. I could do 133.33 and it would still work. It can be any sort of value here. If you make it too big of a value, you'll go off the screen, and if you make it too small, you won't really see it. Like, it's kind of hard to tell that I moved it all with one. So we're gonna just stay at 100, just for simplicity's sake. So move forward 100, and then I wanna turn left 100. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I'm saying something and typing something else. So I wanna turn left 90 degrees so I get that right angle that's in a square. So I do left 90, then I can do another forward because I want to move up now. And I want to, if it's a square, I want to move up the same exact amount. And so if I do that, yay, we got that. So I just need to re repeat this process. So left 90 degrees and then forward 100. and then left 90 more degrees, cause that's not gonna be a full square. And then finally, one last forward. And will this give us a square, moment of truth? Woo, we got it, yay. And also just worth noting right now, one of the most common mistakes I see with people that are new to the Python turtle is that they'll spell one of these like names wrong. They won't be consistent with their names. They'll spell something, they'll spell forward wrong. And if you're getting an error, look to see what the error is in this window. It also pops up right here and try to fix it. So too many E's there. If I run that, now it works again. If I typed in something wrong here, like I just called this forward. Uh, just so, just be careful with your spelling. It has to be spelled exactly right, otherwise it doesn't know how to handle it in Python. Okay, so we drew a square. Next, let's give our square some color. And to do that, we'll wanna start out by specifying the turtle color with the following command. So I'm gonna do keith.color. And then in quotations, I'll type something like red. As you can see, that made it red. And so there's only a limited number of things you can type in here. So the common colors will be accepted in quotations like orange will work. Uh, we can also do blue. That will work. And we can do something like cyan. That will even work. That's probably like the as far as it goes. Is it cyan, cyan? I don't know. But that also works. As you can see. But then you might be like, Keith, you know, I want to do this certain shade of green. How do I do that? Well, you're in luck. So if you go to, uh, there's plenty of sites that do this. So I'm on this online color wheel site right here. So I don't know, you can find these all over Google. But let's say we wanted that random shade of green. So I could go here, click on green, and then like, I don't know, take like this color. So this will give us a hex value. So this number down here is a hex value. And I can actually copy that and then paste in hashtag, which makes it a hex value. 
this value. And if we look at our turtle now, it gives us that proper color we wanted. Cool. So any color you kind of want, you can do it with these hashtag values. It also accepts RGB values. That's a little bit more work. But don't worry if you don't know what RGB values are. But yeah, you can do any color you want. But I'm going to just stick to right now just doing the basic colors. So like blue. Cool, we have blue. Now we have a color outline colored. How do we actually fill it in blue? So that's the next question. And if I looked at the documentation, I would find two functions called begin fill and end fill. So we need to surround whatever we want to be filled with these functions. So I do keith.beginfill. And then I end it with, because after our last forward, I do keith.endfill. Make sure you include the begin fill before and the end fill after. You need to have both. Yay, we got blue. And you still might be asking questions, you know, Keith, I want blue with, with cyan in the middle of it. So we can do that just fine. So go up to this Keith.color function and then do comma. So the first value will be the outline color. And if we pass in one more value, that will be the fill color. So if I pass in say cyan here and then run it, we finally got what we were looking for. We got that blue with the cyan in the middle. And you can do this with any sort of animation you do in Turtle. So that's how you color things. Um, the next thing before we move into the more complex shapes is we'll want to do well, let's say we wanted to make another square at a different location. So I could go ahead, I'm gonna stop filling for a second. I could go ahead and after I'm done with this last forward, I could move, you know, keep going in the downward direction that I was before. I could just do forward 100 more. So it goes through like that. The one thing that's annoying about that is that if I wanted any spacing between the squares that I'm trying to draw, so let's say I, I completely drew this square again, I, I, I can't get any spacing with this, this forward. It's all continuous. So there's conveniently enough a pen up and pen down function that allows me to change my location without drawing a line. So I could do Keith.penup, and then I could do Keith.forward150, let's say, and then Keith.pendown. And as we can see now, if I run that, what the heck, oops. See, I, I told, I made that error that I mentioned. I spelled it forward, uh, not forsward. So it jumped down there, but it didn't uh, draw the line. So that's good. And now if I copy this, cool, we got two squares, just like we wanted. Um, and I can also fill these in, begin fill, and end fill down here. So I actually don't know if this will work. We'll see. Yeah, what the heck? Yeah, once again, I made an error. It's so easy to make errors. Make sure you read your error message. Oh, it did work, wow. Sometimes if you did the, the begin fill and end fill like around the whole thing, you might have to actually break it up. You can do multiple fills in a thing. So you might have to like move it here and then begin fill again right here. And that will also work. But that will just fill it first and then go to the second one and then fill that. Okay, cool, we're almost done with squares. There's just one more thing I wanna mention and that is that instead of doing left, we can also manually just actually set the direction we wanna head. So if we go to the documentation, there's a function called set heading and you can use any of these values here. You can use zero to 360, it does the full circle. 
and you can plug that in and actually mainly go up, mainly go left. Because it sometimes gets annoying if you just want to head up, but you're at this weird angle. Like it, it would be annoying to have to calculate how many more degrees you have to turn to get straight up. So set heading will do that for you. All right, let's go ahead and start that flower that I showed you at the start of the video. So if you don't remember the flower that looked like this. And to do this, I'm actually going to open a new file just because I want a fresh slate. And I'll just save this as something like test2.py. All right. And so basically what we'll want to do for this is if we look at it one more time, and I can even reanimate it. So I'll reanimate it real quick. It's basically just moving forward, then turning a certain angle, then moving forward some more, and then turning a certain angle. So, I mean, all we really need to do is figure out what's a good angle we should turn, and we just gotta keep running that code over and over again. So, to start off this file, let's start out the same way, import turtle, um, and then turtle.done we'll need at the end. Then we'll also need to just name our turtle. I'm actually gonna name this one Bob. Bob equals turtle dot turtle. And as we can see with this animation, if it's still going, it's done now. I'll open up another one. We want to make it go forward, then turn, then go forward, then turn. Uh, and it's a pretty sharp turn, so it's going to be over 90 degrees. It's something over 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and implement that. Try to do this by yourself first, and then. You know, pause the video right now, and then I'll go over it in a sec. Okay, this is the way that I would go about doing it. So we know we want to go forward first. So we'll say forward, we're going to say 150 this time. Or maybe we'll say 200. Why not? We'll make it a little longer than before. So 200 pixels. And then I know I want to turn more than 90 degrees, but I don't know how much. So I'm going to try left... Um, you know, 45, this thing, uh, 90 plus 45, so 135 we'll try. And we'll run that. Ah, shoot, we gotta go forward one more time, so bob.forward, we'll do that again. Okay, we're getting there. So now we just need to keep copy and pasting this code. Oh my god, let's see what happens now. Hey, it looks like we got like a star. We got to keep copy and pasting. You might be saying right now, Keith, there's smarter ways to do this than copy and paste. And you are very correct if you said that. So we're going to actually, instead of copy and pasting all this time, so we're going to, oh, we got a little star. This one worked out pretty nicely. Um, instead of copy and pasting, what you can do is you can use either a for loop or a while loop. If you've never heard of these, you should check them out. Uh, they're super convenient to use. I can do something like for i in range 100, run these two commands. So now what this is doing is it's going over 100 loops and just running bob forward, bob left, bob forward, bob left. Way easier than copy and pasting. Look at that, nice, nice star. Cool. Cool, cool. All right. And it's giving me an error right now just because I canceled the program before it was done. Okay, so we got that. We didn't get the star we were looking for. We were looking for a star that looked like this. And I think the problem is we just don't have sharp enough angle. And also this 135 comes back to the kind of place we want it pretty quickly, so we should use something other than like a nice number like 135. And also, let's add some color to this. No color right now, let's add red. This is the red outline color, and then if we wanna fill it in yellow, just like we have in the diagram, we do red and then comma yellow. So let's now run this. This will be the different color. Uh, and why didn't it fill in yellow? Try to figure out if you can find my mistake. And that's because I didn't do begin fill. 
and I didn't end it with end fill. And it did a little weird thing and I think that's just because it didn't know exactly, because I over traced it, it didn't know exactly how to fill it in. Uh, but we got the basics. So what I said is that the angle was off. We didn't have a sharp enough angle. So let's try something like 160. And instead of running this 10 times, let's try running it 100 times. Look at that go, look at it go, look at it go. Come on, baby. Actually, 100 times is gonna take mad long. But uh, it's still perfect. I think 160 is still too nice of a number. But we're getting cooler and cooler stars. So instead of 160, let's try something random. Let's try like 168.5, why not? We now look at this. And also another useful thing is, if we're running this 100 times, it's going really slow. So we can also increase the speed. I could do speed 10, I think 10 is the max, and now we could run that. And as you can see, it goes a lot quicker than it did before. Well, that looks pretty good. It looks pretty similar to what we had in the example. Uh, yeah, and it fills in pretty nicely. Um, the, and we can make it a little bit bigger if we wanted to, we do 300. Yeah, it's really fun just playing with this and seeing how you get these different designs as you go. Uh, so just to speed things up, the actual angle I used in the example was 170, but this was the, the code I had to write that, uh, that example. Um, and yeah, mess around with your for loop, mess around with your fill, uh, but should look something like this. From this flower code, we can pretty easily go into those complex, like crazy uh, diagrams I showed that use the math. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. Uh, I just wanna run this without errors real quick, just so I have no error message popping up. So now we wanna try just playing around with some complex math functions. So to do that, we're gonna first have to import the math library, um, just like that. And then instead of doing forward, what I, what I basically wanna do is just play around with different math functions. So. One math function we could do is do like math dot square root of i. Why not? So i is the placeholder for whatever is in range 10. So I'm just messing around. You can do whatever you want. Just look up the math library in um, the math library in Python and just try to play around with these different functions and see what you can make. And as you can see, I'm taking the square root of i and it only goes up to 100. So it's not creating that big of a thing because 100 is the max value, so the square root of that is, at max I'm moving forward uh, 10 pixels. So maybe we try multiplying this all by 10. That's giving us a, something a little bit more interesting. Actually, that's pretty cool. It's like a little compass just like sh shooting out at us. Fun stuff. We also could like, be creative with how our angle goes. You could do like once, uh, let me think. We could do I mod one, like mod like 90. So what this does is now it allows us to turn left up to 90 degrees and then once we hit the 91st iteration, so I equals 91, this because it's 91 mod 90, it'll become one again. So let's see how that looks. Ah, it's like a circle. Whoa, that's pretty cool. Ah, and it shot out elsewhere. And the fill is kind of weird right now. I'm gonna just take out the fill. And so actually this is pretty close to what I had for that square root function that I showed at the start of the video. I did math.square root of i, and instead of mod 90, I did mod 180, I believe. I mod it 180, so, and I also made my iterations a lot bigger, so I did something like 2000. I saw how that worked. So it makes these weird circles. Cool, cool, cool. And then you'll see that it shoots out of that once it becomes 
once it hits the 181st and makes the angle really small, makes the angle one. All right, cool. So we did that one. And these aren't super important. I'm just showing you what you can play with really right now. Oh my God, I need to close some windows, huh? Okay, so now let's do the sinusoid function that I did. I'm just gonna do this real quick because this video is already getting fairly long, but I'm just trying another, um, another function from the math library. I'm gonna do math sine of i divided by 10 times 25, and then I'm gonna just move left 20, and I'm gonna make this bob dot forward 10, and this is actually gonna be bob dot left. And literally, don't don't worry if you don't know what math dot sign is. If you don't know what bob dot or if like why I'm plugging these values in, I'm just making fun designs. I'm just having fun with it. Let's see what that does. So that makes like a circle and <laughs> weaves off, makes another circle, weaves back in, makes a circle. And you know, that's just something using the sinusoid function. So just play around with these functions, see what you can do. Um, you could also use the random library. That's another fun one to look up. Look these up on Google. Just, just play around, try to build your skills, get the hang of this coding syntax, um, I recommend. Also, if you make something cool and you wanna show me, Feel free to tweet me at uh, Keith underscore Gallet. It should pop up right on the screen. I'd love to see what you guys are making. All right, finally, let's end this video with that that star drawing. So that the stars on stars on stars drawing that you see here. So to do this, let's begin by just saving another new file. So new file, save as, and it doesn't matter what you call this. Uh, I guess I guess it's good to be descriptive with your your name. So I'm gonna just call this stars.py. All right, and as we did before, we need to import turtle, and then we need to do uh, turtle.done at the end. And what should we name this one? Um, it's outer space stars. So I'm like I don't know. I'm just trying to think of something that like fits. Uh, for some reason, Pegasus is popping into my head. And you know, it doesn't matter what we use for these names. So Pegasus is going to be our new turtle. So turtle.turtle. .turtle. Yay. Let's go Pegasus. All right, cool. We have that blank screen again. First thing I noticed that's different about this diagram is it has that red background color. So to figure out how to do that, we can go into the documentation and I would look up just like something like, I'm, I'm trying to change the background color. And if I didn't remember, first thing I would look up is just background. And as you can see, the first thing that comes up is BG color. So screen.bg color. So how do I access the screen though? So actually maybe we can do this directly on, on Pegasus. So let's do Pegasus.bg color and we'll do red. And it's not letting me do that. And it's because it has to be on a screen. So now if I go to, and let's see what that error message says. Turtle has no object attribute BG color. So I need to do this on a screen. So now I'm gonna look up screen. Oh shoot, it pops up everywhere. So now I'm gonna look up just like, I don't know, get screen. And perfectly it pops up, I click on that see how to use that, I just do turtle.getScreen. So now I can do pegasus.getScreen.bgColor.red. Yay, oh my God, that blinds my eyes. So I want a, a nicer, a little bit more of a subtle red. So I'm just gonna copy and paste in the hex value that I used in this drawing, because that's a lot easier on my eyes. Okay, cool, we got that. And now I'd say the, the next thing we need to do is how do we, how do we, and also, how do we make a star to begin with? So, I mean, it's pretty similar to that flower we just drew, you know, you're going forward, then turning a certain amount of angle, then going forward. Um, so try to think about the angles you'll need. And I'm thinking about like, 
uh, a pentagon right now because that also has five points just like a star. So I'm trying to think of like how a pentagon would work. You know, how, how do I add these in my head? It, it's going to take a little bit of messing around and playing with to get it right. So I'll go ahead and actually just write how to draw a star. Try to draw a star and come back right now if you can't figure it out or figure it out to see what I do. So drawing a star forward, we'll just do 200. And then I would play around with this angle for a while, but after careful tweaking, I found that 216 degrees, so kind of the breakdown of why that works is you turn left a full 180 to be going the opposite way, and then turn 36 more to get that nice sharp angle that you're looking for. And then we're just gonna repeat this. And we'll have to do it at least five times because there's five lines and a star. Look at that. Come on. Look at that. Nice. Nice looking star. And I should have mentioned this with the square, but if we wanted to, probably the good code practice would be to like create a function that takes in a turtle that makes a star. So I could do something like this. Um, well, we'll just call this, we'll take, say it takes in Pegasus. And now instead of like calling this code a bunch, if I wanted to repeat stars all over my place, I could just call star Pegasus. And that would run the code. So sometimes it's good to draw it out into a function. We're actually probably not going to do that right now. But we could have done that with our square. If we wanted to draw squares different places, like just make it a function and then call the function wherever you want to do it. Okay, so we have the star, but what we need to do is we need to do smaller stars off of bigger stars. So the angle doesn't change at all, but the length of our lines does change. So if I change all of these to 100, and this is gonna get obnoxious to do, <laughs> let's just make a for loop. If I change all of these to 100, we'll play around with this for a sec. For I in range five, It's gonna be a smaller star, hopefully. Yay, it is. What if we made it 50? Would that be smaller still? Even smaller still. Let's make it 10. I can still tell it's a star. It's a little bit harder at this point, but you get that if I pass in a smaller value here, we get smaller stars. So what we wanna do with this recursive function is basically draw our star and as we're drawing the star pass in stars with half the size so this is what it's going to look like so i'm going to do i'm going to make a reverse recursive function called star so i'm just going to comment this stuff out real quick and the recursive function is going to look like this it's going to go we'll call it we'll just call it star it's going to take in a turtle and then it's also going to take in the size variable oh my god what did i just do so oh, I can't type Z size variable. So in this case, like the size is the amount we want to go forward. And what we want to do is we want to just copy in this code because we want to draw a star. But the, the change we want to make is that and you can also undo comments with uh, another control slash just a FYI. The change we want to make is that, so this should, it's not going to do anything now because we didn't call star, but if I called star with Pegasus, oh, and this should be turtle. We should pass in the same thing that we um, use, call, use as a variable in our function. So we use turtle here in our function. We use turtle here. So now we're calling, oh, it's going to give me an error because I didn't give size. So let's start with 100. Oh, shoot. And I want to do size here. I cannot type a Z. Okay. So that gives me star like we wanted. Let's do 300. That's, does that give us a bigger star? Yes, it does. Perfect. So 
what we want to do is let's just say at every line, every time we finish a forward movement, let's draw a smaller turtle. So what we can do to do that is we call that star function with our turtle, but now instead of passing in size, we do let's do size in half. So size divided by two. Watch what happens now. Oh, ah, I feel like maybe I used too big of a, a value. Let's just let's try this with uh, two hundred. Still too big. Oh my God, what's happening? Let's try it with 100, just to begin. And it's giving me an error for some reason. Don't quite know why yet. So it might not be working right now because whenever we have a recursive function, we need a end case. So we don't want it to keep going if the size is less than or equal to 10. So I'm gonna return if that happens. And we'll say else here. And oh, this error message is blocking you. Yay, that's working now, looks like. I think there was one other possibility for an error. Actually, no, I don't think that is. I was thinking that maybe the size had to be like an integer value or something. But it seems like it was trying to, it, it, oh, I guess uh, what was happening was it was, it kept entering this loop and calling, it would go forward, but then it would call star with the smaller size. And because it was just dividing and dividing and never having an end case to return out of, to break out of that recursion, it never would stop moving forward. It would just move forward slower and slower amounts, like smaller and smaller amounts. And that would just continue, I guess, like pretty much forever. But as you can see, we have some stars here. It's kind of looking like my, my finished product over here. Um, but it's getting a little bit crowded. And really, all to fix the crowding, all you have to do is just use probably a better value. I also, st I started in mine, I started with 360. And instead of dividing by two, I divided by three. So I'll save that, and run it. And if you want to see the full thing, just have to go out here. Thing is though, like we're now drawing this recursive stars and it's not much code at all, actually. Like it's a pretty straightforward amount of code. And if we wanted to add some like fills, like the smallest uh, stars in mine were filled with this. This doesn't fill every star. It gets kind of tricky with the recursion, but you can fill the smallest stars with this. Um, but yeah, this is basically all of the code. Um, you can also change the location. One thing I never mentioned before is you can use, I'm gonna do Pegasus dot pen up and then Pegasus. So that's lifting the pen. Go to is a function that can just put us to a specific location on the, on the map. So I could move this to like negative 200 X, 100 Y, and that will give us, and then put our pen back down. That will just move it so that our first star actually fits on the screen. Uh, peg, peg is not defined. Look at that. We got our recursive function working. Okay, that's all I'm gonna go over in this video. Hope you, hopefully you learned something and had fun in the process. Uh, make sure to subscribe to not miss any of my future Python videos or any other STEM type video that I'll publish. And if you learned something in this video, it would mean a lot to me if you throw it a big thumbs up. Peace.